highly recommend uh, to check out these conferences and to check out the Bitcoin 2022 conference, which is going to be in Miami next April 6th through the 9th. Uh, it is being put on by Bitcoin Magazine um, and like Bitcoin 2021, which is one of the places that really kicked off this um, El Salvador um, journey with Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin 2022 is going to have amazing historical moments, as well as the entire Bitcoin community. It's going to be the big, biggest Bitcoin crypto event ever, uh, and it is Bitcoin only. So um, very excited for it and uh, very excited for for these upcoming events in El Salvador. Uh, so uh, again, if you are interested in Bitcoin 2022, b.tc forward slash conference is the best place to get a ticket. And um, yeah, use promo code Satoshi to save yourself 10% off. Um, all right, I'm gonna shut up for a second here while uh, we get some folks up on stage. And uh, if you need to get on stage, if uh, we, if you are on the guest list, please request. Please request so it's easy for us to get you up on stage. What is up, Rodolfo? Welcome to the stage. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, while we wait for Aaron, do you want to give people a, a quick uh, history on the BitConf and uh, you know what you've been doing throughout the years with Bitcoin? Yeah, sure. Well, I. Um... The Bitcoin started in 2013, and I think, unless someone can confirm the, the negative, that it's been the longest running Bitcoin conference uh, in the world. It's uh, uninterrupted, no? And it's the only one that kept the Bitcoin world in it since 2013, going after the awful 2014 and 15, where Bitcoin was a denial and blockchain was the was the only thing that, that was accepted uh, by most of the of the institutional <laughs> um, sector, no. But we've been doing this in non-for-profit as since since the first day uh, to support Latin American growth. Yes, helping people from Latin America to believe that they could be become leaders themselves. Yes, today some of the projects that started or or, or were um, related to the Bitcoin in their initial days. Uh, have become like unicorns, yes, in the space, right? Like Bitso, Mercado Bitcoin, and, and others, and and several of the projects that today are running in the in the Latin American uh, space also did their first steps in in some of the Bitcoins, uh, past the Bitcoins, yes, like like um, Stratum and, and and others. So so we've been here helping. Latin Americans to understand and to believe that this is this is something that can change their future and and been doing in a different country every year just not to we are from Argentina but once we did it in Argentina we oversold all the tickets and and we decided that this should be done not just for us but for any country that that was willing to to listen and we've been moving the conference always to the country that we thought was the best one each year, not the most financially smarter place, but the one that we thought uh, that could do best, yes, taking the Bitcoin there. And it's been always well spoken because of the high quality of speakers being one of the first ones uh, also back then uh, made that we had like the key speakers of, of such a time from Andreas. I think, I think it was one of his first talks also given. And we had like, you know, Eric and Charlie Schramm and at that time, Bitcoin Jesus and you know, all, all the key speakers in the first conferences. And they kept coming or, or we always had like a high quality um, speaker level. But also because in my case, I'm very, very into the cultural aspects. We 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 are loved by by speakers and attendees because of our experience uh, the experience around the event. Yes, we've done things like like horseback riding and and zip lines and and I don't know uh, mountain mountains and beaches and so so it's all it has always been also a, a whole experience. We say that the Bitcoin is not a it's not just a conference, it's a whole experience. And I, and I think that what makes 
these key speakers to come back every time and 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 at least to to ha having a community around us is is the, the experience behind the Bitcoin, no? Awesome. Thank you for, for that, Rodolfo. Uh, we now have pretty much everyone on stage. I think the only person who's on stage is FOMO. Please request uh, to join and we can let you up on stage. But want to turn it over to Aaron. Uh, welcome back to your uh, your long running El Salvador Spaces series. <laughs> yeah, thanks, CK. CK, can you make me uh, or can someone make me a co-host? Yep, Eli is working uh, on that. Yeah, it sounds like we already started, so let, I, I suggest we just keep going. Rodolfo, first of all, are there any speakers confirmed yet? Yes, uh, though we are running on the on the scope because we have very few time to, to achieve this, but uh, Kaiser, uh, Stark, um, Lop, this is our on-site. No? We're only focusing on those who are coming to the conference. Then we will have also live speakers, but... But we're, uh, I mean, uh, stream speakers. But we're focusing on the on the live speakers uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, Tad Hedrica, the one from DLC. We have Giacomo, Giacomo, uh, bueno, Stacy, um, uh, Stephen Libera, well, some some others coming 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 in the in the very near future. And and this is just some of the first ones that come on my top of mind is it gonna be bitcoin only or are you also inviting other crypto currency no people? we i mean I, the bitcoin has always been like a kind of bitcoin maximalist but uh, we are we are open to to let's say to to other implementations yes of of mostly when we when we give a talk about blockchain use cases yes we allow some other blockchain applications but we're mostly bitcoin uh, like 70 80 percent bitcoin uh, strongly focused and and when we talk about the future and, and what's coming we're always do talks about the bitcoin future and not not others so so it, i would say it's mainly bitcoin focus and the only space where the others might have a, an additional um an additional space for talking is in blockchain application for use cases in governments or in other in in other applications where yet bitcoin is not ready no right okay so let's hear we also have people from adopting bitcoin on stage yeah. uh let's hear who who wants to take the word there hunter nicholas jeff oh I'll, I'll jump in so this is hunter co-founder of galloy for those not familiar with galloy we aspire to be the number one Bitcoin banking as a service solution to make it easy for companies and communities in the future to bank on this new internet native open source money. Uh, you'll probably be well familiar with the Bitcoin Beach Wallet, which is our initial proof of concept, the largest community on Bitcoin bank in the world to our knowledge. And the important context there, you know, Nicholas and I went down to El Salvador about a year ago now um, in order to, you know, create the Bitcoin Beach Wallet. And, you know, through the work there, and then, you know, some of the engagement we've seen it became clear that there was a need for another global lightning conference. There hasn't been one for more than two years since the last event that, that Jeff at Fulmo organized in Berlin in uh, summer of 2019. And so that's really kind of the context for the, the genesis of adopting Bitcoin, where we felt it was really a need to bring together not just the Bitcoin community, but more acutely the lightning community. And so adopting a Bitcoin is, is very much a Bitcoin conference exclusively, you know, with an acute focus on lightning 600 people in El Salvador, November 16th, 17th and 18th, the first two days, that Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll be at the Sheraton Conference Center, which is the best hotel conference center in the capital, where we'll have two simultaneous tracks, one uh, a development track, which will be very technically focused. And then the other is what we're calling an economic track, which is more focused on real world adoption, not just in El Salvador, but Latin America and beyond. And we're super excited about the speaker lineup that we have there. We have Alex Gladstein from Human Rights Foundation, Alex, the CEO of River, Ray, the CEO of Paxful. We've got Stefan Levera as one of our main MCs, Rene Picard, it you know, just goes on and on with people who've been very active building on Lightning. We'll be speaking there. And then day three will be at the beach in El Zante, where Bitcoin Beach began, a much more kind of informal day with the Bitcoin Bazaar and open air food stalls and, you know, places for people to meet in town, but also then, you know, the ability to experience kind of 
you know, where this whole movement began by interacting with the merchants across town. Um, and, you know, the last thing I'll say is in addition to be being Bitcoin and Lightning focused, we're looking to donate 100 percent of the profits uh, from the event um, to either local Salvadorians or to Lightning Network developers. So we're pretty excited about that aspect as well. And maybe just to give a bit more context about why, uh, at least how the conference has been initiated, it, um, we decided to do it probably two months ago or like two months ago. Um, it's basically after the Bitcoin law was announced, but before it was effective, um, we had meeting with some financial institutions in the ground and um, and Aaron, you were there, and uh, it, it's it's basically Moritz at Spectre that really initiates uh, a lot of the conversation with local banks here. And meeting with them, we start to understand that a lot of the financial institutions here have no idea what's you know what was coming with the Bitcoin law. And some of them, when we talk with them, it was like, okay, yes, you know, we are thinking about Bitcoin, but we have this thing with you know Whipple or. Uh, and some other like Stellar or other cryptocurrency that you know are also something we are. I mean, people we are talking to, and and the this was the start of like I mean, no, like it's a Bitcoin law. We should be Bitcoin only, uh, and we should you know just help educate this financial institution about Bitcoin, but more precisely Lightning because ultimately this law is about payments. It's really about uh, and and therefore Lightning is really what makes sense. So this is what triggers the idea of making this conference a couple of months ago. Yeah, I think one of the things we could, I we did uh, spaces on that uh, as well, of course, that was the very first of these that I did. And uh, I think one of the conclusions that we walked away with was essentially this country is desperate for a lightning conference. Like they, So is it going to be geared towards locals or international developers or what's the main audience then in your in your mind yeah i would just say that the audience is, is both i mean we're certainly very sensitive to you know engaging the local community we're going to have our own hackathon we're reaching out to the university community and giving away you know a large number of scholarship tickets you know to you know young people who are interested in in El Salvador and building on Lightning, but at the same time, this is a global Lightning Summit. So in addition to that, we're definitely looking to attract all the best and brightest minds and speakers and developers in the Lightning community from around the world. I, I don't have the exact count in front of me, but I think we probably have more than people from more than 30 different countries already committed to either speak, speak or attend. So it's, it's very much a global event focused on El Salvador, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to start letting some people on stage if they have questions. Wendy, do you have a question? Oh, do we have Wendy on stage or not? It looks like she's still joining. Twitter Spaces is being especially buggy right now. Uh, and also, I want to shout out to um, to Rodolfo um, and Fulmo. I don't know why you're getting kicked out, but it might be helpful to quit the app completely and then uh, try to rejoin. And always request, and that makes it easier for us to let you on stage. Um, I actually have, I have some questions like what, uh, you know, do you like, are, what are you thinking about like security and appetite from locals and stuff like that? Like what's the attitude like around, uh, you know, both of these events? Sorry, I, I just uh, hopped in again. I, I had my battery drain. Uh, can you ask again, please? Sure. I mean, uh, I was just asking, like, what what's like the local um, attitude towards these events? And uh, I guess you know, either Rodolfo or Hunter can can respond. But I'm just kind of curious. Like, do you feel like you need security? Is are, are people like really excited? Like, what's the what's the general overall vibe? You know, with the locals and on the streets in the areas that you're you're organizing. Hunter, you or me? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I mean, we've certainly seen a lot of excitement. You know, we're about three weeks into to selling tickets. Uh, again, I don't have the exact count in front of me, but we've sold well more than 100 tickets of the, the 600 person capacity that the Sheraton will allow us in these pandemic times. You know, we're certainly sensitive to security on one hand. On the other hand, I think, you know, El Salvador has, you know, um, kind of a, a perception problem where it's actually much safer on the ground, both in San Salvador and outside of the capital than people realize. You know, Nicholas and I have both spent extensive amount of time on the ground in El Salvador in recent months. And, you know, I 
none of us and anybody we interact with real, really feels that there's any issue there. You know, the Sheraton, you know, is where, you know, President Obama and all press presidents stay when they come there. It has its own proper security, you know, staff, you know, 24-7. We are exploring the possibility of whether we might need additional security, which, you know, our instinct is no, we don't, but we're certainly running that to ground. And we'll have that sorted out in the next week or two, well in advance of the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, on our side, uh, I would say that, that you have a, a, two, two different kind of people in El Salvador, yes? The ones who already had the chance to interact with Bitcoin prior to, to the law, and they're very excited about the concept, about having these kind of events down there, yes? And, and then you have the people who's new to Bitcoin, yes? And they, they might not yet understand why Bitcoin is is such a good opportunity beyond the fact of what Chibo brings and what and what the the remittances mean stuff like that no so our focus in in our event we have several kinds of activities we have two days of hackathon and we have one day what we have a conference at itself like the the regular conference with all the speakers I spe I said but we have a a free open day where we expect over the three thousand people coming uh, just for the community. To, to have a deeper understanding about why Bitcoin, yes, and, and what's the difference between Bitcoin and Chivo and, 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 and the basics, real basics on Bitcoin. Uh, and this will get a, an active support from, from government as for promoting and for bringing the people in. And so, so I see like a, I, I see from government a huge, a huge support, yes, to this to occur, yes. And from and from the people, I think that there is like a a, a big amount of users now that are starting to, um, to 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 think about if Bitcoin is also something that they should get a deeper understanding uh, from. But you speak with the people from from El Sonte, yes, from Bitcoin Beach. They they realize that beyond having a law that says you need to take Bitcoin, uh, people need to understand needs needs education about Bitcoin. So. So part of our project is also doing a, a big open free conference with also some shows and stuff like that, but, but mainly with, with two different kinds of, of content. One is, is structured content and the other is ask me anything. So we will have like, like two hours of content, two hours of asking me anything, two hours of content, two hours, two hours of ask me anything with, with eight different focuses and topics on the, on the content. But all in Spanish, 100% in Spanish, 100% uh, for the people to ask whatever they want and, and give them the real basics of understanding why Bitcoin is uh, disruptive for their future somehow. No? And then we have obviously beyond the hackathon and beyond this activity, we will have the, the regular conference where, where we will focus on some institutional aspects yes, of, of this because we do expect people coming from, from other countries and, and governments coming from our country to, to get a deeper understanding of, of what's happening in Salvador. And, and also the, the technological aspect, no? the, the, the next steps in Bitcoin evolution and, and privacy and security and, and all those aspects. So, so we, we have like different targets. Yes, the hackathons is for, for students. The, the open is for the regular final um, final user and the technological and the other conference is more for, for our Bitcoin community and for business men trying to to address a deeper understanding with a longer conference yes about where Bitcoin is going and how how can it be used and applied in in other countries our main focus is trying to to bring uh, Bitcoin to other countries you no know? Bitcoin law to other countries yeah, on the topic of security, I can only I can share my own perspective, and my own perspective is that uh, so I've I've spent most of my time in either San Salvador or one of the beach towns, so El Zante, and there are a few others. And uh, from my personal experience, I haven't felt unsafe at all. I think uh, that these areas are not really uh, uh, gang invaded or anything. It, it feels secure and I personally don't think it's an issue, but I mean, that's just my personal experience. 
All right, Bitcoiners, I want to tell you about our newest sponsor. This show is brought to you by Ledin.io. I have been super, super impressed with the guys over at Ledin. I've actually known the co-founders, Adam and Mauricio, for a very long time. I've had the pleasure to watch them build Ledin up from a tiny, tiny startup to now a super impressive institutional grade Bitcoin and crypto lender. Y'all, I'm so impressed with these guys. They are offering some of the best rates out there. I don't think anyone even comes close to touching them. You can get 6.1% APY on your first two Bitcoin that you deposit into Ledin interest accounts, and you can get 8.5% US on USDC deposits. I mean, I know all the competitors. They're not even close. If you're going to put your crypto and your Bitcoin into an interest account, Ledin is by far the best. And on top of that, like I said, these guys are hardcore Bitcoiners and they know the products and the services that Bitcoiners want and appreciate. They come up with B2X. It allows you to put your Bitcoin in. They leverage it up and you can, with one click of the mouse, get twice the exposure to Bitcoin. So if you're super bullish, Ledin has you covered with a super, super easy way to get leverage with B2X. And then on top of that, they know that Bitcoiners care about your reserves. They know that Bitcoiners don't like under-reserved and not full-reserved financial institutions. So they are pushing the frontier in transparency in the digital asset lending space. And they are the first digital asset lender to do a full proof of reserves and proof of attestation through a Mariano LLC, a public accounting firm. So the letting guys, they know what Bitcoin is like. They are legit. I encourage you guys to check them out. Do your own research and go to ledin.io. That is L-E-D-N.io and learn more. We have some people on stage. Christian, what's up? You have a question? Hi, uh, uh, yeah. Comment? I was uh, just going to uh, ask or uh, suggest if, 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 uh, if you guys are planning to uh, have information there uh, for people that are uh, wondering how they might be able to move to El Salvador or set up businesses there. Because even just here in Canada, I've been getting a lot of inquiries about how to basically go to El Salvador since this law kind of kicked in. Rodolfo, you want to take but this? In, in our case, we have a legal clinic, yes, where people can entrepreneurs can ask local and international lawyers about their strategies and about about their concerns on the legal aspects for free yes so this this is also during the the opening of the conference the, the free day of the conference um, to, to actually to address the, the questions that you were just asking Christian sorry yeah hey Rodolfo or or Hunter or uh, Noor, uh, anyone feel free to jump in on this, but um, you know, do you get the sense that for both conferences that the majority of people who are coming are Bitcoin enthusiasts from El Salvador and abroad? Or do you get the sense that it's like a combination? Yeah. Uh, what, what's the kind of breakdown of uh, the people that are showing interest in buying tickets to the conferences? I think it's both of those buckets and maybe a third or fourth. I mean, we certainly have Bitcoin enthusiasts from El Salvador who are already registered, you know, far in advance of the events. We have, you know, another bucket that I would characterize as, you know, you know, professional businessmen or businesses from El Salvador that are either in the process of developing their own Bitcoin related products or thinking about it in a very serious fashion. And, you know, the large contingent of them who have already you know, either purchase tickets or agree to sponsor adopting Bitcoin, the Lightning Summit. Um, and then, you know, there's just the broader international community where it's been, you know, we've got researchers like Rene Picard, you know, we've got a lot of the independent, leading independent Lightning devs who are coming to speak. We've got, you know, a lot of the leading companies, um, you know, who are sponsoring like an OK coin or, or others who fit that bill, both investors and operating businesses in the space so you know even in these early days you know a couple months in advance of the event we have a pretty healthy mix of both locals who are interested locals who are really building their own businesses around bitcoin international companies and international developers you know probably you know have many dozens in each category who have already signed up to join we have another ideas are like flames did you have a question so hunter actually told me to bring ideas on stage so ideas are yeah. you uh yeah he's a co-organizer of adopting bitcoin uh, yeah hi guys maybe maybe just to add to hunter's uh insights um so um 
we are not um, we're getting a lot of inbound requests from South American companies, banks, who are interested in uh, attending the conference. Um, and uh, as per the tickets, we're not really um, uh, collecting a lot of information. Um, so judging by the email addresses, there is uh, uh, many um, institutions from Latin America, from South America, from El Salvador itself, um, and, uh, and a mix of um, yeah, many people uh, from the Bitcoin and Lightning communities, developers. Yeah, on on our side, um, I would say that that we have different focus for different activities. Yes, there there will be, for example, a, a B two B speed dating day. Yes, during the same days of the hackathon, and in that case, the the focus of people coming are are local business and, and entrepreneurs willing to connect with different projects in the crypto space to see if they can apply it to their, to their platforms, yes. Uh, then during the conference, the, well, no, the, the free day is for the community, for the final users, yes, this is the main focus, uh, like the, the people at the, at the streets that sell stuff. And, and the, for the conference day, we, we do see some government people coming, we do see businesses, yes, we need to get a deeper understanding of of Bitcoin next steps, and and we do see a, a full bunch of, of crypto enthusiasts from around the world that follow La Bitconf and uh, and and that always interested in in, in joining uh, an event with the additional. I think that the that in this year in particular, uh, we do expect to get more people willing to do business in El Salvador than just coming to La Bitconf because of La Bitconf. No, so so that would be like the main main focus of people we are trying to attract people thinking to do business in El Salvador or in the region uh, uh, as, as one no this is this is the main focus and and in the, and we are doing this together with with four conferences for me this was like a huge a huge um, a huge thing to to achieve yes to work in just two months uh, a full conference together with four four other conferences yes that we all decided to go not for profit in our case we, we always been but Bitcoin magazine is supporting it's a co, a co it's co-working with us in content we have talent land which is a, a conference that it's being hosted in from Mexico with over two million people watching the, their events uh, every year and they are doing all the all the live streaming aspects and we have a blockchain that I'm summit that they're focused on hackathons working on the hackathon aspects so so, so I think we are trying to put up a very strong, nice, with different targets, uh, uh, whole event, no, in, in five days of activities. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this was really the point you were addressing, and you're breaking up a bit, at least for me, Rodolfo. If there's any place you can find better Wi-Fi or something, maybe that would improve things. There might be people here listening that want to go to both conferences, or that are thinking of going to one of them? Like, to what extent can, can people expect to go to both? Have you guys figured out if that, uh, because they're gonna be in the same week, are they gonna be compatible in that sense? Or what's going on with that? Sure, so we, you know, we announced the Adopting Bitcoin Conference about four weeks ago now. Again, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that week, November 16, 17, 18. The two main conference days are Tuesday and Wednesday, the 16th and 17th, um, you know, at the Sheraton in San Salvador. You know, I think Rodolfo, you know, as we were talking together, tried to be as, as thoughtful as possible in terms of accommodating the very point, Aaron, that you just raised to, you know, make it into a effectively a Bitcoin week, if you will, and allow people to attend both events. And so I, I believe the main business days of, of La Bitcoin, Rodolfo's event will be then the Thursday and Friday you know, immediately following the Tuesday and Wednesday of our two main events, you know, so for the Thursday example, for example, anybody at attending adopting Bitcoin, you know, we would certainly love to have you in El Zante at Bitcoin Beach, um, you know, for the more informal day and kind of get a sense of where it all began and meet Jorge and Shimbera and the whole team who, you know, are the real leaders who, who put everything in motion in 2019. But, you know, if you wanted to attend both adopting Bitcoin and what Bitcoin, you would have a decision to make on Thursday. Do you want to go to Bitcoin Beach, or are you going to go to day one of, of La Bitcoin? Yeah, actually, those those doing uh, the Bitcoin Beach day, 
yes, eventually they can join on Friday to our second day of event, or uh, eventually go to the Bitcoin Beach on Saturday, where we're going all also to, to the Bitcoin Beach, to Misata, and, and other, it's like three different uh, spots in, in, the, in the beach, yes, taking the, the experience tickets, uh, or the days before. They, can, they, they do this like a full week, <clears throat> they can go on Monday or on Monday, Yes, to to have these these visits to the beach and and then take Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as as different content. Yes, I do expect to have different kind of content at each activity. So so I do think it's it makes sense to try to attend both. Yes, and and the days that we have activity overlapped with with um, with the content of of adopting Bitcoin are activities that are more for the for the local people and not for the international attendees. So, so yes, we, we did thought, even though Adopting Bitcoin announced this first and we had like some issues getting, getting the dates, we, we did decide to do this like a, like a week for people just being able to attend as much as they want, uh, in just not going twice or three times to El Salvador, no? So both conferences have sort of their main days and then some extra days, yeah. and the main days do not overlap. But then on the extra days, people might have to choose between the extra activities of one or the other or main day of one over the extra activities of another or something like that, right? So I guess, uh, mm -hmm. you know, first first of all, if you have questions for, uh, for these folks, if you're going to be in El Salvador for these conferences, um, you know, request to come up. We'd love to facilitate those questions. Um, you know, I, I want to like zoom out a little bit and just kind of want to talk about the impact that El Salvador is having and kind of curious uh, what your teams are seeing. I know we have Joao from Open Note on stage and, you know, he's been a part of the rollout of Lightning over there. Um, but just from a, a bigger picture, like, let's just talk about Bitcoin in El Salvador, the impact that it's making and, um, you know, what perspective you're seeing. I, I guess uh, let's go with Hunter first. Sure. Well, I mean, I think it goes without saying for everybody who's listening here, it's 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 unprecedented, you know, what's happened with the Bitcoin law in El Salvador. And that's not to be understated, number one. You know, number two, the rollout, you know, starting from September 7th with Chivo has been a little bit bumpy, but that's certainly to be expected. And, and quite honestly, it's probably been a little bit smoother than I would have anticipated given the, you know, the very aggressive 90 day timeline that President Bukele had put forward to, to, to make everything go live in early September. You know, we've, we've got a couple of conference sponsors for adopting Bitcoin, I think, on the line here in terms of folks from OpenNode, as well as from IBEX, who have kind of been kind of right at, in, in the, the eye of the storm, so to speak, in terms of using their solution to support, you know, a large number of merchants actually accepting Bitcoin. Um, in, in countries so we can talk about that and maybe turn over the, the mic to them. And, you know, the other bit is this has generated just a tremendous positive um, amount of interest from people around the world. So, you know, Nicholas, you know, who obviously runs Galloway with myself, we've received just almost unlimited un inbound interest from people around the world, entrepreneurs, you know, right next door in Guatemala and Honduras, entrepreneurs across Africa, who are in various stages of development saying, look, I want to stand up a Bitcoin payment solution in my country, or I want to stand up a full-fledged Bitcoin bank. Can you come, come help us? And so this will obviously be a story that plays out not just in, in the months ahead, but the years ahead. But whether or not Bitcoin is legal in certain countries or not, there's plenty of people who, you know, inspired by what they've been seeing through our work and others' work in El Salvador who are definitely looking to pick up the mantle. And so I'll just leave it at that in terms of high level comments, but I think into the details, both maybe pulling up, you know, the IBEX or open node folks to talk about their experience in El Salvador, as well as, you know, I'm happy to further expand about some of the international interests we're seeing if, if folks want to talk about that as well. Well, let's see, let's see if we have a question. Who's on stage? Jao? I actually have a question. <laughs> Jao, what's up? Hey, what's up? I actually have a question I got in the middle. You guys were talking, um, uh, regarding the main days and if the conferences overlap i'm actually going so i'm actually curious to know so what are the main days for each conference so i can plan to attend both yeah it's pretty simple for adopting bitcoin the lightning summit it's tuesday wednesday in san salvador the capital at the sheraton hotel conference center 
for a lot of big conf, the main business conference days are Thursday, Friday, immediately thereafter. And then as Rodolfo highlighted, you know, he's got some events, the hackathon early in the week, as well as a beach day over the weekend for adopting Bitcoin. In addition to our two main days on Tuesday, Wednesday, we just have the third day at Bitcoin Beach with the entire original team and some very nice structured events in El Zante. Okay, thank you. Yeah, actually, uh, on, on our case, as I say, the main day might be Thursday and Friday. And, and Saturday is like the nicest day also in the same case uh, of going to the beach and having, it, it's more like a full day with, with uh, until, uh, until beyond sunset, you know? Uh, being at El Sonte, at Misata, and at El Tunco, just three different places to, to get a, a deeper uh, a deeper understanding of what the of what the country is. Yes, um, around there we would have some some activities, some surf, surfing activities, fishing activities, but well, no, different things that are related to to what La Vida Complex Experience means. That's on Saturday, but meaning main days for me is difficult because a main day is, for example, the day the Wednesday day, but it's for the local people. So in, in the sense of what the conference it pretends to be, yes, I think that our main day is on Wednesday, uh, but it's not a main day for the international attendees. It's a main day of the objectives of the conference to be achieved, you know, which is addressing the local people. Does that answer your question, Joe? Yes, it does. Thanks. Rodolfo, can you tell us right. a little bit more about, like, uh, just remind us a little bit more about, like, what what the programming is going to be like around that Wednesday where you're going to be working with locals? Yeah, actually, it's very it's very easy. We will have like uh, two different uh, two different kinds of content. Yes, we have eight different topics, thirty minute talks uh, about eight different aspects. I don't remember them right now. No, <laughs> eight different aspects of why Bitcoin is 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 relevant. Why Bitcoin is a few. It's an approach for needs a a. a forward and future looking, yes, and understanding beyond the benefits of the short term. Um, and, and it allows people to do their own questions from whatever, no, and ask me anything uh, from why my granny is not being able to do such a thing or, or why if I'm a businessman, I should do such others or stuff like that. So we will have a team of people willing to, to answer to all of these kind of questions openly and some content as I said, some, some driven content uh, just to let the people get a deeper understanding yes, on, on things that they should be considering. Uh, then the same day we will have some artists doing some stuff on, but I don't want to say everything, <laughs> but some stuff on, on international artists doing stuff on, on some surfboards, yes, like an artist show. And we will have, a, at the night, we will have like a final a party, but for example, for those who are coming to the hackathon, also we will have on Tuesday a, a pool party, uh, and and on Wednesday we will have well, this this party for the global community, which is open and free. Anyone can come; they don't need to pay just to come to the to the Wednesday. Yes, yeah? but I don't want this to be competing with with adopting Bitcoin. Uh, but it's mostly 100% Spanish. And then on Thursday and Friday we have also some activities for for the VIPs. Uh, plus the fact of having the, the conference with these main topics, no? So, uh, with these other more recent topics. I'm, I'm yeah. thoroughly impressed with Rodolfo's ambition to and scale and scope of all of this programming, especially given the, the short timeline here. You know, the, it, it should trigger the thought, you know, our, ours we, is a little more scaled back again with just the two main days, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then a month ago when we announced this, you know, we were thinking that taproot activation would actually be targeted for Thursday, the 18th of November. It looks like it might be slightly sooner than that, but nonetheless, on that Thursday at the beach, which is our third day, we are having a taproot activation party as the sun sets on the beach in El Zante as well, something just to look forward to uh, for those who will join for that portion. And then um, our conference will mostly be presented in English, but for all panels that are presented in English, we will have simultaneous Spanish translation. Yeah, Hunter or Nicholas or whoever wants to answer. I, I understand that there's also some, some tie in between adopt, yeah, adopting Bitcoin and the Lightning Conference that was in Berlin before. What's the connection there, if any? Yeah, if Jeff is on the line from FOMO, he can take it. Otherwise, Nicholas, maybe you want to jump in here. Yeah, I think Jeff has some issues, uh, some connectivity issues. Nicholas? 
Yeah, uh, so Jeff is uh, organizer of the Lightning Conference done in Berlin two years ago and is a co-organizer of Bitcoin, the Lightning Summit. So yes, you know, he's helping to bring back most of the speakers that was, you know, present at this time. And it's generally very helpful to just organize this conference because both for me and uh, Chris, this is the first time we organize a conference. So we pretty much welcome all the inputs uh, from Jeff, for sure. Right. <laughs> so should we also expect a similar style of conference? Uh, the Lightning Conference was a very uh, hands-on type of conference with a lot of like hackerspace types of uh, areas and these kinds of things. Yeah, there will be the, the beer that you can pay with sets. Uh, the, we will have a hacker space uh, in parallel with the two conference. So yeah, it, it will be very similar vibe, I believe. And just to, what right, Nicholas please. is saying there, we've got our two simultaneous tracks, the economic track and the development track. We will have a third space, massive amount of space at the Sheraton for a, a simultaneous hacker event. Um, that, that's what Nicholas was articulating there. Bitcoiners, I am so excited to tell you about the Bitcoin 2022 conference. You guys, Bitcoin 2021 was absolutely a smash hit success. It was over 13,000 Bitcoiners coming together, breaking the barriers on who can come together and celebrate freedom, celebrate Bitcoin, and the energy was absolutely electric. Unfortunately, it was just oversubscribed. There's just people flowing out everywhere. And this year we are learning, we are making the conference bigger and better. We are moving over to the Miami Beach Convention Center, and we are going to be throwing a massive four-day festival for Bitcoin, celebrating Bitcoin, bringing together the greatest minds in Bitcoin and the greatest businesses in Bitcoin. And lastly, the culture of Bitcoin all together. We have a four-day extravaganza planned for you guys for Bitcoin 2022. Uh, day one is going to be industry day. It is a day where you can buy a special ticket in order to uh, just mingle and make business deals happen. Day two and three is going to be a full-blown Bitcoin conference. This is our main conference. This is going to be on April 7th and 8th. And then lastly, we have the Sound Music Festival day four. Imagine going to Coachella. But for Bitcoin, there's going to be very few talks. It's going to be all about the culture of Bitcoin. It's going to be all about hanging with your fellow plebs. It is going to be an absolutely amazing time. There's going to be Bitcoin musicians, Bitcoin artists, and all your favorite Bitcoiners and just an amazing environment to party and just see it all, soak it all in, and to get people to realize that a Bitcoin world, a world filled with Bitcoin people doing Bitcoin things is the world that they want to live in. That's what Bitcoin 2022 is all about. That is what the Bitcoin conference is all about. That's what Bitcoin magazine is all about. So it is going to be a celebration of Bitcoin, the Bitcoiners, and this amazing movement that is going to make the world a better place. Go to b.tc forward slash conference. Learn more about the Bitcoin conference. Learn more about all the amazing things that are happening in Miami around the Bitcoin conference and buy your tickets. And guess what? If you buy your bit tickets with Bitcoin, you save $100 on all the tickets and $1,000 on the whale pass. So if you want the VIP pass, the, the big kahuna, if you buy with Bitcoin, you save $1,000. That's a lot of stats. So go and do it right now today. Don't wait. Prices are only going up. This is going to be a can't miss event. Bitcoiners, I want to tell you about the Deep Dive. The Deep Dive is Bitcoin Magazine's premium market intelligence newsletter. This is a no-fluff, hard-hitting, incredible newsletter going deep into the market, helping you understand what's happening with derivatives, what's happening on-chain, what's happening in macro, what's happening with the narrative, and what's happening with the tech. My man Dylan LeClaire is an absolute savant. He is making his name known in the Bitcoin community, getting shout outs left and right, getting on podcasts left and right. And him and his team are bringing you everything that you need to know about Bitcoin. You don't even have to be on Bitcoin Twitter. You can ignore every other newsletter. This is the newsletter to rule them all. Go over to members.bitcoinmagazine.com. Sign up today. And if you use promo code MACRO, you get a full month for free. You have nothing to lose. What are you waiting for? Sign up. See the incredible work that Dylan and his team are putting out. And if you don't like it, just unsubscribe. You don't pay a dime. But if you do, you know, it's going to be well worth the sats in investment and in understanding Bitcoin and gating 
the confidence to continue to invest in Bitcoin and making the right moves around Bitcoin. And it's going to be well worth every single Satoshi. Uh, again, can't recommend it enough. That is members.bitcoinmagazine.com, promo code macro. Do it today. All right, we have Matt on stage. Matt, what's up? Do you have a question? Hey, Matt. A comment? Maybe not. <laughs> um, so I actually had a question uh, just to keep it going, but um, I'm curious how like is making Bitcoin something that's like uh, avail like Bitcoin Lightning something that you can use um, to buy things um, at all the conferences like a big focus. I know at Bitcoin 2022. Um, we're working very hard to make sure everything is lightning enabled and Bitcoin enabled. So that way, you know, you can use fiat, you can use whatever, but you can use Bitcoin everywhere too. Is that something that is a focus at both of these events? Yeah, for, uh, actually, you can only pay the ticket with lightning. I mean, I think we have enabled uh, fallback in Bitcoin day one. Uh, so no, you can pay because some people have difficulty paying with Lightning, but you, you cannot come to the conference with your fiat uh, currently. So you have to, <laughs> you know, we're trying to, so Charlton is one of the uh, great hotel in, in, in San Salvador. Uh, they don't take Lightning, so we are working hard to make them accept Lightning, but yeah, it's, it's taking, taking time and effort, but hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, in our case, uh, tickets, uh, needs to be paid in bitcoins and sponsorship is only being paid in bitcoin just know actually the prices are placed in bitcoin there is like a, the the main sponsor uh, it's one btc and then you have the the bitcoin sponsor which is 0.5 and it's not related to the price of bitcoin but to the bitcoin itself uh, and and then tickets are paid in lightning or in bitcoin and yes the the hotel venue is one of the main issues usually we are yet getting like which hotel we are not doing this in a venue. This is not in a hotel venue. Uh, this is outside the hotel. So, so we are trying to to negotiate which hotel which hotel allows uh, Bitcoin payments to to be to promote them as one. And we also have a support from Avianca, which is an airline that they take Bitcoin as payments since, since 2017, I think, but only only live, not not online, only in person. Um, and and Avianca is one of the sponsors of the of the airline, the airline, no, which which have straight flights from US, straight flights from from Canada, from well, of, I don't know from Canada, but but from Central America, and Latin America, oh. and they have a discount on on the tickets. What well, I have a question actually. Could, could you tell where the event will be? Uh, I'd love to get more idea, but. To, to picture myself, how would yeah, be because I, I, I'm not sure. Actually, the, the dif different activities in different places, yes. One of our main concerns was to have some open spaces. Yes, we, we, we plan not to do things on in an hotel because of, of, of health issues, yes. Uh, but it depends on the size of the event you're doing, no, eventually. So as we do expect to have a very open day with, with a big support from government, no? inviting people to come and stuff like that. Uh, we need to do this on a sheltered but open space. So, so we are doing this in Salamanca, which is like 25 minutes from, from, the, from San Salvador. And then we have the, the hackathon, which, which has a closed venue and an open venue. You, you might be uh, programming uh, at the side of the pool, for example, yes, in this, this place, which is called Circula Militar. Uh, which is a, an old military club there. And the, one of the things with El Salvador is if you're not considering an, an hotel like a venue, then you are very limited <laughs> to, to the options, yes. But we, were, we, we are concerned about all the security and the health measures. So, so yes, the venues, I, I mean, they're less relevant than, than the days and the activities because eventually they can... They, you, you will anyway need to move to one place from one place to another, uh, depending on the day, no? Not, not on the same day, but for example, the B2B speed dating and the hackathon will be in one place Monday and Tuesday, and the other activities will be in one place Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But they are not in a specific hotel. Where, where do we want to take this? Is there anything that uh, we've missed or that you, you know, the, the different organizers want to tell the audience? Um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, if Q&A is necessarily 
um, the most effective, but uh, kind of curious. Yeah, no, as far as I'm concerned, if people have questions, they can request. Uh, other than that, I think we covered a lot, but definitely open to uh, suggestions from any of the speakers. One basic question I have is, uh, what does it cost to go to the conference? Sure, for adopting Bitcoin, we've tried to keep it pretty modest. Um, you know, the uh, early innovator ticket, which um, I think, Kamal, correct me if I'm wrong, we still have live for one more day is 150 US dollar equivalent. Again, we accept lightning payments for the Adopting Bitcoin Summit. Um, that increases uh, in the next couple of days to be $200. And then um, even if you buy a last minute ticket, the maximum price to attend our three day event will be the 300 US dollar equivalent. And again, um, we're not looking to profit on this event at all. 100% of the profit above our cost to, to stage the event will be donated to the lightning community or to the Salvadoran community. Yes, and in our cases, we have different kind of tickets, different kind of tires, different kind of everything. <laughs> but today, the regular ticket is 350, um, which is access to today, obviously, the free day. So you would have a need to pay for that and to the other two days of conference, uh, plus to, to some of the activities are, are being hosted in this, this venue. Then you have the business ticket, which has additional uh, benefits it's just need to check on the on the website but but it gives you access to the BIP area and uh, stuff like that plus the chance of of participating on, in the b2b round round tables and speed dating and and other things uh, and then you have the experience ticket which is beyond it's complementary and the experience ticket is what i always recommend everyone to take not because of the price we as as i said since 2013 we've been doing this 100 percent non-for-profit so so uh, we, we don't earn for doing the conference, but, but any results help to keep promoting. We have a Latin American approach, yes, to keep promoting the, the Latin American ecosystem and, and granting and stuff like that. Plus, in this specific case, as we're doing this with Bitcoin Magazine, with Talent Land, with uh, Blockchain Latam Summit, and with the Bitcoins, we decided that any, if any, yes, expenses for doing this conference as big as I'm saying, are very high, yes? But if any, uh, the results, the profits will go to also to specifically to El Salvador, yes? To support actually uh, entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs working on, on Bitcoin solutions. And, and, and these are the prices, but the prices might, get, might, might be getting higher related to the amount of people coming, uh, booking, yes? Not to, to, to a timing, because, because this has to do with not wanting to have an overbunch, overexposed the community coming. Yes, we, we do expect people to come to be willing to do business and not only to do to to spend the time around. Yes, and willing to to I mean we're doing this effort to help El Salvador to grow and to help El Salvador to become a, a beacon of light for the other countries in the region. Yes, we don't care much about who many how many people are attending or not. But we do expect around 1,000, um, and in the free day, more than 1,000. No. Awesome. I mean, that's a lot of people, um, and I, I love the edu like the local educational component, all in Spanish at LibetConf. I think that's awesome, and I love that you know adopting Bitcoin and uh, getting Lightning a bigger part of of this from a more enterprise perspective is also happening. I feel like both are very good representations of the Bitcoin community and effort in, in El Salvador. So it's really exciting just to see like, okay, maybe the government in El Salvador totally failed at educating people, but the Bitcoin community is taking that opportunity to step up and, you know, teach them the right things, like get onto but these non-custodial wallets and do these things and Bitcoin will serve you. Yeah, Rodolfo. You know, in my case, I don't think that they failed to do this. They just, they're not good or bad decisions, yes? They're just uh, consequences to the decisions that you decide to take, yes? So I think that they, they know that for getting under, and a deep understanding in Bitcoin, it's a longer road, yes? That just getting the people, uh, their Bitcoin wallets, Bitcoin wallets in their hands, yes? So, so I think that they just, I, I've been watching how they've done other things, yes, how they address security, how they address COVID and other stuff. And I think it's just a strategy. It's not a, 
tailor or non tailor it's I, we could we can or we cannot be ag agree with the way things are being done yes but it's a strategy and each of us decide the strategy that we want to to follow when when we are the ones who decide so so I, I think that what's happening now is something that could be expected to happen also, yes? Having the Bitcoin community open to support and to help. And, and this is happening. So, so if we are doing it and it's because of the spoil strategy or not of the other one, I don't know. I, I, I can't say. But it's happening and it's how it happens. And now you have 2.5 million people. Yes, which do have a Bitcoin wallet, but they don't do that because of the Bitcoin. They do that because of the Chivo. And that's the short, the short term uh, understanding of the utility of, of Bitcoin for remittances. Uh, but, 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 but I don't agree that, that they, they fail in. I think it's just a matter of how they're deciding to do this application. Yes, this implementation of the technology. And I, and I think that having 2.5 million people having a wallet on their hands and doing all the communication related to Bitcoin more than to Chivo, because it's very, if you see the, the Twitter accounts and stuff like that, they, they really talk about Bitcoin um, as, 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 the, as the key aspect of the Chivo wallet. I think this is highly valuable. Yes, so, so I, 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 I'm fairly like happy about what and how things have been done down there. Interesting. Um, I mean, I, I do think that there's a great opportunity for the Bitcoin community to educate. So, uh, of any, yeah, in general, very happy that Bitcoin is in El Salvador too. So, I, I definitely agree with you, Adolfo. Um, Aaron, do you want to wrap this one up? Do we want to do final words, or you know, how do you want to close this guy out? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, let's see. If, yeah, let's let's do that. I have a hard stop at twelve, anyways, local time. Um, yeah, so let's get a. Final word from uh, one representative, I guess, from both conferences. What do you want the listeners to know? And then we'll call it a day. Yeah, tell people where they can get tickets and, you know, all that kind of information about how they can learn more as well. Let's go to Hunter, then close it out with Rodolfo. Sure thing. Well, um, I suspect most people on the line know who Michael Saylor is, who's been very vocal in terms of uh, pronouncing all the beauty and greatness of Bitcoin over the last year. And he had a recent podcast with uh, Robert Breedlove where he says, the early adopter does it because you can, the late adopters do it because they need to. And we are definitely organizing adopting Bitcoin, a lightning summit in El Salvador for the early adopters who not only do it because we can, but we really be, do it because we believe it's necessary for the people of El Salvador, the people of Latin America, and the people of the world. So we encourage anybody and everybody to come join us. We tried to keep our event very modestly priced, yet super well organized to encourage maximum participation. Uh, you can learn more about um, the conference at adoptingbitcoin.org or at our Twitter handle at adoptingbtc or just reach out to myself or Nicholas or Jeff from FOMO or any of my other fellow co-organizers. Co Happy to answer any questions that you have, and we look forward to seeing you in El Salvador on November 16th, 17th, and 18th. Awesome. Rodolfo, why don't you close us out? Actually, supporting, coming to ours, coming to the one of Adopted Bitcoin, I don't care. Yes, uh, just come down to El Salvador, meet the local people, think about starting from here, other projects, yes, and, and in my case, specifically, come down to Latin America, yes, and, and, and enjoy our our spirit and and i think that there's much to be done yet and i i hope and i believe that latin america might become like one of the main uh, adopters and promoters and 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 i don't my english is not the best one obviously <laughs> but, but one of the of, of the best places yes to to start the revolution from you know so so i invite everyone to just to come down, it's a good opportunity to also, it's a nice experience to go to different places and being able to talk with, with anyone about Bitcoin, even if they did adopt it or, or they did not. Yes, you can go to any businessman, yes, to any, to any um, uh, retail, to, to anywhere and talk to them about Bitcoin, and asking them if they, they are taking Bitcoin and it's not what's Bitcoin about. They all know. The awareness in El Salvador is 100 percent yes and 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 so so it's you can feel yourself like 
uh, an explainer. You can be yourself, whatever you want. Just come down to El Salvador and enjoy uh, what's happening down in, in, in El Salvador and have your own your own thoughts about if this is good or not, if naive it's a it's it's a uh, authoritarian or not, if security. But but just don't stop doing things because of of prejudgment. Don't stop doing things. Uh oh. Looks like Rodolfo got kicked out. Um, don't know how that happened, but uh, I, I I agree and go to El Salvador. I know a lot of Bitcoiners have already done the pilgrimage, and I think both of these events coming up uh, in November are uh, are a great opportunity to do so as well, especially as things start to get colder uh, up north. Um, it could be uh, a nice uh, change of pace going over to the beach. Um but yeah, I think this is a good place to close this one out. I want to encourage everyone to uh, check out both of these conferences. Go check out Bitcoin 2022 uh, in Miami. That is going to be next year, April 6th through 9th. Uh, and that's going to be absolutely huge, the biggest Bitcoin event in history. Uh, so uh, I think you know between these opportunities, it is amazing to see Bitcoin meetups and Bitcoin conferences back in action. Bitcoiners are on the front lines of freedom. Uh, we are not scared and it is incredible. So um, I just, you know, I, I think that the Bitcoin community is beautiful and I'm so bullish for El Salvador and Bitcoin over there. Um, Rodolfo, you just got back. Um, I was about to wrap this one up, but I do want to give you a chance to uh, close out your final thought there. Just, just come down to El Salvador, come to see believe in uh, not nothing, just come down to El Salvador to us or to adopt in Bitcoin or to both yes, but be part of what's happening here and don't don't allow your, your prejudgments or concerns to avoid being part of what's, of what's going on and taking the chance of talking with anyone on the streets about Bitcoin and their awareness being 100% and being able to, to talk and to discuss with anyone in El Salvador about Bitcoin yes, it's, it's a very great experience I guess Aaron has been doing so also. And I think it's one of the nicest things of coming to El Salvador, being able to talk with anyone yes, about yes. Bitcoin and being Bitcoin a topic. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I, that's going to be the case around the world soon. But El Salvador is definitely the front lines of that. Um, well, thank you so much, Rodolfo. Thank you so much, Hunter. Thank you so much, everyone else who joined from the conference and who asked a question, who listened along. Uh, I hope that everyone that can does make it over to El Salvador for you know, history of, you know, Bitcoin rolling out as legal tender and as a serious legitimate currency in the first country in the world, uh, which is El Salvador, translated to the savior in English. So I think the Bitcoin story uh, just continues to get more and more epic. Uh, but with that, I think it's a good time to close it out. Um, Aaron has a hard stop and uh, we've been here for a couple hours now. So with that, cheers and peace. Thanks, okay.